Okay. <coughs> so I think uh, we can start, right? Okay. So close. Okay. So I think we can resume from this point. Okay. On Monday, we talked about uh, the component life cycle. Uh, component life cycle. And we say that each component is subject to two uh, phases. Okay. There's a rendering phase in which React basically calls the function that implements the component. Okay, so your function, something, props, etc. And then there is uh, another phase, which is the commit phase, that is run by React afterwards, where React updates uh, the DOM, okay, and then run what we said to run through the use of an hook, that is the use effect hook which can contain side effects that we uh, don't want to mix uh, with the render phase because we would like to have uh, in the render phase to have functions which are pure functions. So the result depends only on what we passed as parameters, so only on the props. Okay, props and state, we can say if we would like to add uh, the state, but the state again is controlled by React. Okay, so last time we talked about the uh, use effect, we started experimenting a little bit with the use effect. The use effect hook has two parameters. One is the callback function. So basically the code you would like to execute in this commit phase, so after the rendering. And the second parameter, which is optional, but basically we will most of the time always specify it, because if you don't specify it, uh, uh, the callback will be called every time, every render, okay? And so in this second parameter, you say when you would like to execute the callback. Okay, um, <coughs> and we saw that we can omit the parameter, so basically at every render the call callback is called, okay, so the code that we specified in the use effect is run, or we can specify an empty array, so it means that the side effect runs only once, or only one time, the first time when the component mounts, so when the component is in this first phase, it appears in the virtual DOM, okay? That's a mount phase. Or, third option, you have a list of values and React checks uh, if any of those values have changed. If they have changed, the callback is run. Otherwise, the callback is not run, okay? This is controlled by React. We just have to provide values in this array every time we call the use effect. And we also saw some examples, right? So uh, we saw um, yeah, like this example, okay? You remember the gate, the quick gate. You have a use effect, you have a callback. So some code that needs to be executed uh, uh, depending on the condition that you put here in this, uh, as a second parameter. And uh, uh, in this case, the callback is executed first at mount of the component. This is always true, okay, for anything you write in the use effect. And also, in this case, since we specify an array and this array contains something, it's also executed when the value the single value, we only specify one value here. So the, the single value we specify in the array changes. So every time, in this case, it's a state, every time this, this state uh, change value, okay? And uh, in the beginning here in this example is set to false, okay? And then it changes to true, and then the set amount will change it to false again, okay? And here you see the timeline. Also note that, uh, as we noticed last time, that sometimes the callback is executed, but uh, its practical effect is nothing. So, for instance, um, you know, um, uh, when uh, the value is already false, okay, and it, uh, the callback says set, uh, set open false, like at mount time, okay, you start with the false value, and then after mounting the component, React executes the callback of the use effect. The set timeout is run, so after a while this timer expires and 
what is passed as, uh, as a parameter to the set timeout uh, goes into the callback queue, and then JavaScript at a certain point executes this function, and this function executes set open false. Okay? The state is already false, so in practice there's no effect. But just remember that this function is executed. Okay? So it might have an, an effect. Okay? This is useful later when we will see other examples. Okay? Just remember that one thing is I'm executing this function, and this is, these are the rules that uh, control the use effect behavior. So at mount time, and then depending on what you specify, a second parameter. Um, and another thing is what you do in this function. Okay? You can have you can do things that have no effect or things that have an effect like changing the um, state or uh, basically changing states okay you cannot change properties it's wrong from the react point of view to change properties okay you can use properties but you cannot change the properties okay um, okay we need to be careful because if the array includes variables that always change when you execute the effect, you risk having an infinite loop, okay? And React will warn about you, about this. It will warn you about this. So uh, basically, after a certain number of rendering, it says this is probably an infinite loop. It stops executing the code, and it gives you a warning in the console, okay? So while developing, you can easily find this behavior. Okay, but this is always a wrong behavior. It's something that needs to be fixed by who is developing the application. Okay, because you cannot have infinite rendering. There's something wrong. Okay, at a certain point, uh, there might be a complex chain of dependencies, but at a certain point, it should stop. Okay. Um, okay, so we saw this example. Uh, it cannot be an async function. This is just, uh, you know, uh, a limitation of React. I mean, we, we take it uh, as it is, okay? Um, but uh, we have an easy way to overcome this problem, okay? So you define a callback, uh, you define an async function, so actually the async function you would like to call in the use effect, you define it inside the callback, and you, then you call it, okay? So in this way, the function does not return a promise like the async function. It's simply a normal function, normal callback, okay, and can be accepted by a use effect, okay. Um, we saw also we also saw this example. Uh, this a, pa a, a part of this example that we did didn't no a part of this example that we didn't see yet, okay. It's how to handle slow responses, and we will come up to this, uh, uh, come back to this in a minute, okay? Um, um, I would like to finish uh, specifying the use effect behavior with this slide, which I didn't discuss uh, last time fully, I mean. And what we are missing here is that uh, the callback that you pass to the use effect, so the first parameter, can also return a value, okay? And the value from use effect is expected to be a cleanup function or something else, I mean, but uh, is useless. Like typically, if you don't put return in JavaScript function, you have undefined, okay? Undefined is fine, it means uh, I don't have anything to do, it's fine, okay? But if I return a, a, a function from the um, use effect callback, this function will be run uh, before uh, the component is unmounted, okay? And also before uh, you do the next call to the uh, callback function, okay? So in short, you can define a function here as a return value to clean up something that you did uh, uh, while you were operating inside the callback. Like you had a subscription, you set a timeout, and now you want to destroy the, the timeout, so don't execute uh, uh, the function that you register with a timeout or interval and so on, you can do it in this function, okay? And React will execute it for you. Uh, and this is particularly useful when the component unmounts, okay? Because uh, when the component is mounted, you can handle it in some ways, maybe in the callback. But when the component uh, is unmounted, it disappears from the 
data structure of React. And then if you try to do operations on this component, like setting a state and so on, this state doesn't exist, so you run into an error with React. Okay? It's not very common to do this kind of things, but it's just to finish the discussion about the use effect. Okay? I would say most, if not all, the uh, um, submission at the exam probably don't need this uh, uh, function uh, as a return value of the use effect because they don't do anything that needs to be unregistered or cleaned up uh, uh, when the component unmounts. Okay? But this is just to, to finish the discussion. Okay? So the, the full uh, life cycle uh, of the component is a bit more complex. There could be other hooks uh, that we are not going to see into this uh, course. Okay? It's still fine. We can do everything we need with the use effect. If you need the more advanced functionalities, you are invited to have a look at the React manual and uh, you know, uh, see what, uh, uh, what they propose to do for more complex situations. Okay? Um, but we don't uh, need these things uh, at the moment. They are mostly uh, ways of optimizing the performance, okay? Or very peculiar situations like uh, we need to work with the actual DOM and not just with the virtual DOM and so on, okay? So let's go back uh, to the example that we saw um, on Monday. I think we, I can sh show it to you with the uh, Visual Studio. Um, let me see. Yeah, the life cycle. Okay. So remember, we have from now on, uh, we will have uh, uh, two parts to run. So one is the web server with the APIs, uh, and the other is the React development server. So we'll always have two folders, separate folders. Uh, just for our convenience, they stay on the same computer and they talk to localhost and stuff, but uh, uh, just for our convenience, but there are two different parts, the client and the server, okay? And the client is served by a second server. That is the React development server. So, uh, let's start uh, with the server first. Uh, so, lifecycle server, okay? So, as usual, node mon index, okay? And then a second terminal, I open a second terminal, uh, in the same folder, in the client, uh, no, uh, lifecycle client, uh, npm run dev, okay? So, that's the example that we saw last time. We saw this uh, text uh, where we can fill things in. So that's the network requests. So A, B, C, D, E. And you see the five requests towards the server. So the first is with text A and then A, B, A, B, C and so on. Okay. But you might also have noticed that, uh, you know, there's this uh, clock uh, that appears. Okay, waiting for the answer from the server. Okay, so uh, this is just a nice feature to have. It's not uh, really mandatory, but sometimes uh, when you talk to a server and the server doesn't uh, respond, doesn't give you a response immediately. Okay, and so how can you communicate this uh, to the user? Well, uh, this is actually a state for your application. So you are in a sort of waiting state. Actually, that's exactly how we called it on the slide, right? It's a waiting state. So while we are waiting, we could uh, um, uh, show something to the user just to let the user know that uh, we did something, but we are still waiting for the response from, from the response from the server. Um, so, in short, how is this implemented? Okay, so uh, simply implemented as a state, uh, React state, like all the other ones, okay, 
like they show form and so on. Uh, every every state that you use the until now, okay. And it's set to true at uh, uh, in the beginning, okay. Just because uh, I'm assuming that the first thing that this code does is go to the server and load something, and actually. Since I put the fetch inside the use effect, that's exactly what happens at the mount of the component. Because when you mount, mount the component, React will always call the uh, callback of the use effect, regardless of what you wrote as a second parameter. Okay? And so we decide that in this state, waiting, which for us, we decided that it is a Boolean state, true or false. If it's true, we show this uh, clock, okay? Uh, and if it's false, we don't show this clock. So this is just uh, one of the many ways in which you can write uh, the JSX uh, to make something appear or disappear depending on the value of a state or a prop. I mean, we don't have a variable in general in, React, in um, JavaScript, okay? Uh, so, if waiting is true, the return value, uh, the value actually, no return, this is not a function. The, the value of the expression is the JSX you see on the right, otherwise uh, it's uh, uh, what you see on the left. So, it's false, so nothing gets rendered, okay? Um, okay, and then we need to handle the state. And how do we handle the state? When we get, when we get a response from the server, we know that we are no more waiting. Right? So when, when you get an answer from the server, you s at the one of the last operations is to set the state, set waiting false. Okay? That's all. And also, if you would like to, to have this clock or this symbol appear when you load uh, something from the server, every time you do a call towards the server, you set uh, the waiting state to true. Okay, so React renders the, uh, the, uh, the component in the form that it shows you that it's waiting for something. Okay, so you set it to true when you load something and you will reset it when you have the data. Okay, and of course you can do other things. Indeed, the, the previous uh, Instruction is to set another state. A set flipped is the text that has been flipped and returned as flipped from the server. Okay? That's exactly what's happening here. So we can have a look at the at the states. Um, we need to go to the no what's the text flip. Okay? So that's a, the first state is the controlled form. So it's exactly what is contained in the controlled form in the text box. The second one is the one that comes uh, from, from the server. So the flipped variable, right? So what we saw in the code before, I oh know, on the slide. So the flipped variable, okay? The third one is the waiting. So, uh, yeah, third one is waiting. Now it's false, okay? I do something, it will go to true, and then we'll go to false again. I'm not sure uh, if it's fast enough to show it. Uh, let's see. True, false. Yes. It doesn't uh, um, lose uh, pieces. <laughs> okay. It's just a bit slow in showing the, the state updates here. Okay. But actually inside React, things happen much faster. Indeed, uh, the render happens quickly. Right. It works in short. Okay. Even if you delete something. Right. Okay. So that's a convenient way of dealing with uh, potential uh, slow responses from the server, okay? Again, we are always talking about these things because we, we think that single page application, that is the main topic of this course, is something that should help uh, the user uh, to have a better experience. So when, when uh, we would like to have the user to have a better experience, we always would like to notify the user of the fact that something is happening in your application. I think there's nothing more annoying than, you know, doing something in an application and nothing is given back to you. You don't know if, it's, if it worked or not. You click on something and nothing happens. Okay? 
you, you might have a bit of patience, but uh, you know, uh, uh, patience uh, runs out quickly in the sense that you would like to have uh, the feedback from your application at least that something is happening. Then it can take time to process and so on for many reasons, but then you would like to have uh, an immediate feedback that something uh, is happening. And indeed you see that the clock uh, com um, is shown immediately, right? And then something will come back, okay? And you know the interface will be updated and so on, okay? So I think it's interesting to see, you know, this uh, part of the code that uh, last time we didn't have time to, to comment. Okay. So just a React state and managing a React state. Okay, nothing more. But I mean, very useful when you deal with uh, uh, events that can take time to happen. Okay, like interacting with a server. And since today, basically, we we are talking the whole lecture about interacting with the server. Uh, it's good that we start from this point, okay? So this is the cleanup function after the side effect I was talking about uh, before. Uh, what can you do in, in this uh, cleanup function? Well, typically clear timers, okay? Like uh, you have something that you created at component mount, but you would like to have a clock that updates, okay? So there's a state and there's a set interval that updates a state. If the component uh, gets unmounted, the first set, set state that happens uh, on a state that doesn't exist anymore because it, it, it went out of the virtual DOM and so the state was destroyed, gives you an error, okay? So before unmounting the component, you should remember to clean up this, uh, uh, this timer, okay? Otherwise it gives it runs an instruction that will give you an error in, in JavaScript, okay? Because React will say there's an error. You, you are trying to set a state that doesn't exist. What I'm supposed to do, okay? Um, okay. Um, okay, this is the detailed explanation. Also, think well about this slide, <laughs> okay? Because a very common error is, you know, you learned use effect. It's a very powerful tool. Okay, now I will start using it, and I use it a lot. Uh, and you even use too much. Okay, because since you can react, I mean, uh, yeah, react is not a really nice word here, but I mean, you can you can perform actions when when something changes properties and state you are tempted to use uh, use effect uh, quite often. You create a state variable, and then you attach the use effect to the state variable, and then you set the state and wait for things uh, to happen. That is what you write in the callback. But be careful, not, not many times you need to use the use effect. For instance, you know, to transform data for rendering, you would like to filter a list. That's exactly what you, you will do in the next lab. I will publish it uh, soon. I think this afternoon or maybe tomorrow. Okay, for next lab on uh, on Tuesday. Okay, you will uh, um, implement something in 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 the exercise you are carrying on uh, with in the lab. So there's a list of the film and there's a filter list. And uh, we will load, I will ask you to load the list of films from the server first. Uh, that's the uh, easiest part. I mean, probably 10 minutes are enough, you know, for that part. But then maybe you would like to load uh, the filtered list of films uh, from the server, okay? Just as an exercise, okay? And so do you want to have uh, two states? One state and another state that depends on the first one? Uh, I mean, uh, these kind of things uh, can all be implemented with the use effect. Now you have the use effect, so you can react to the change of a state and perform actions that change another state and so on, okay? But try not to complicate your code too much. Like, for instance, if it's just a rendering issue, okay, and nobody requires you to interact with the server or have, uh, you know, operation like this, you know, uh, you compute something from data that you have, you don't need to, you, uh, to, to use a use effect, okay? You simply write it as you, do, uh, as you did it uh, until now 
in the code of the component. It's an action. It's an action that you can do at every render. It's fine. It depends only on the props on the and on the state. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. Okay. Just don't introduce a second state if what you need can be computed from the actual state and the props, because a second state needs to be maintained. It needs to be kept in sync with the previous one. Uh, so it means that you need to have a use effect that keeps in sync the two states. So when one, when one state changes, the second state changes. And then maybe you have actions on the second state, and sometimes you forget to update the second state, and so on. So your co code is complicated too much for a thing which is, in theory, very simple, that you could have coded as part of the code of the component and rerun at every render. Okay? So typically, transforming data for rendering is something that you don't want to put into an, uh, an use effect. Okay? Because remember, the use effect runs asynchronously. So the only thing you can do with the result of the callback function that you pass to the use effect is put it into a state. Okay? Because you're not in the render phase, you're in the commit phase. So it's not something that you can put into the return. Okay? To, to preserve the value for the next render, you need to put it into a state. Okay? So just do it only if it's really necessary. Okay? And also, you know, it's a more, it's a simpler way to operate. So, I mean, there's no need to, to complicate things for, for, for no reason. Okay? And also, handling user events. That's another place where you can uh, write a code that uh, uh, operates when something happens, typical user events, like the clicks, uh, the change of the forms, and, and things like that. There, you don't need to use the use effect. You don't need to set a state and then, uh, you know, with this state that has changed as a dependency of a use effect, run other code. Just directly run the code you need. You can call an API, okay? Uh, so you can ask the server for something, okay? Directly in the event handler. No problem in doing that, okay? It's an asynchronous operation. You know how to handle asynchronous operations. You have promises. You make uh, the API return a promise, and then in the then of the promise, or with the await, you write the rest of the code after you call the, the API. And it will be run when you have the answer from the server. Okay? No need to write a use effect. Okay? The only thing that you probably need to write in such functions is that when you have the answer from the server, you set it into a state because you need to wait, it, to wait for the next render phase of the component to show the data. Okay? So, this is just the two very important examples in which you don't need to use the use effect. Okay? And I'm telling it to you because uh, I've seen uh, at the exam a lot of uh, solutions, uh, I would say, full of use effects, which in the end, they might, might also work. I mean, typically, you spend time in debugging and testing it, so in the end, typically, they work. But there are a lot of use effects which are not needed, okay? Because you can do things in the event handler. Don't forget this, okay? So if, if I see a solution with, uh, let's say, 10 use effects, hmm, you, you probably spent a lot of time in debugging this solution with no real advantage, because in the end it behaves like another solution which has much less use effects. I'm, I'm not there to count the use effect and saying, you know, uh, the, you get uh, one less mark for each use effect. I mean, I'm not going to do these kind of things. But you spent much more time in coding and in debugging you know, a complicated chain of things uh, that happen in your application, while you could have simplified things much more, okay? Um, okay, but uh, we will see, yeah, I, I will point it out uh, when, when, uh, when, uh, when it happens uh, uh, while we are uh, developing, I mean, carrying on uh, with our uh, example during the lectures, okay? Uh, Okay, so uh, we are, we've already seen how to handle a very simple API call towards the server, but before you know, introducing these uh, API calls uh, um, 
toward the server, uh, I would like to point out something, you know, about the th theoretical part. So, um, to, to discuss uh, some concepts, let's say, before going on and code a little bit and introduce a very simple functionality that loads data from the server in our example. Okay, first of all, you need to always remember that uh, even though React only provides you one hook for handling the state, that is use state, your states in the application could be classified in two, in two types of states, okay? There are just presentation states or view states, which are no, uh, you don't need to store in the backend, that means in the server, okay? Like, is the form shown or not? I mean, you don't really care, okay? Uh, you don't want to store this information in, in the database, okay? Uh, you added a film. Yes, I would like to store this information in the database. I would like to have this information be permanent, okay? So I added uh, some information. I deleted some information from, from, from the database and so on, of course. This is permanent. This is an application state, okay? I'm showing the full list, or just a part of a list, uh, or uh, there's a filter active and so on. This is probably a presentation state. I'm saying probably just because you should uh, have a complete understanding on how the application works. So if you are expected to come back to the application and have the exact same view, that's probably something that needs to be stored, but that's part of the application in this case. But in general, you know, the way in which you interact uh, with the application is a presentation state. And the data that the application is showing to you is the application state. Th that is something that uh, you would like to store on the server. The list of fields, the list of answers, questions, uh, uh, the items you purchased, uh, whatever you think it's worth uh, saving on the server, okay? Um, so, presentation state doesn't pose a problem for us. We already know how to deal with presentation state, okay? Since when we talked about use state, we know how to deal with the state, okay? You define the state and you use it when you need it. Uh, with a set state, which happens asynchronously, no problem, we know it and so on, okay? The application state is something different. It's something that needs to be retrieved from the backend, from the server, something that needs to be loaded from the server, should be updated uh, when something changes. I added the film, I deleted the film, I modified the film, I added an answer, modified an answer, and so on. So this operation should be performed on the server side, okay, to be permanent. Uh, and also, I should periodically check for updates because remember, this is not a local application. This is not a program that is running on your computer. This is a web application. There's a client part that is devoted to interact, to interact to with the user and to talk with the server. And there's a server. And the server is shared among many users, okay? At the moment, we're still just us, okay? But from the next week, uh, we will add other users, okay? So every web application is a multi-user application. Every, I would say, uh, useful application. Of course, you can create an application which is just single user. I mean, no login and so on, like the ones that we did until now, but they are not really useful in practice, okay? You cannot use uh, uh, an email or a uh, Google Doc and so on if you don't have a, a user account, okay? Because how can I distinguish the fact that uh, it's my document, your document, his document, and so on, okay? So, but we will talk about the users later, but it means that uh, uh, the fact that there are many users that might share information means that I should periodically go to the server and ask if something has changed, okay? The example I did and, uh, now, so the, the document is probably not so well suited, but let's say you are reserving a place at the theater, on a train, on a plane, whatever, okay? There's just one plane and there's just one train, okay? You reserve a seat, somebody else reserve a seat and so on. So if you would like to have the list of available seats, you need to ask to the server because the server is the only place where everybody goes every application, every client, I mean, goes 
to store the information when you occupy a seat, when you book a seat and so on. Okay? So things might change even if you don't do anything in your client side application, so in the browser. Okay? You're not doing anything and somebody else has booked a seat on the train. Okay? So periodically you should go and check what's happening on the server. Okay? We will come back to this point. Okay? But th there are things that uh, uh, might happen even if you are doing nothing on your client. Okay? Think of an email application. Emails arrive and you do nothing, right? And then you open your application, you would like to ask to the, uh, to ask the server about which new emails are present or which is the list of current email received emails and so on. Okay? Typically, this state is uh, uh, an application state that is uh, high in the application uh, in the tree of the component in the tree of the component that uh, are included in the application, potentially into app, okay? Because many parts of the application need to access this information, okay? Um, so it's quite different from the presentation state. So for now. At the moment, we forget about the presentation state. It's just the way in which the application appears. And we focus on the application state, OK? So we need to first load information from the server and then being able to also update uh, uh, the information on the server, OK? So first of all, a recommendation, which is also uh, valid for the exam, OK? Uh, just a recommendation. But uh, as usual, ha I hope you follow this recommendation, not just because you satisfy me, that's, that's not bad, but uh, uh, also because it should simplify your work, okay? So keep things ordered as much as possible, okay? Uh, so do a, a create a file to contain all methods that interact with the server, okay? And don't mix them too much with the rest of your application, okay? Because they are functions, but they are not components, okay? They are functions that will return a promise, as we will see. Uh, so they are async functions, in short. And if you have them uh, in a single place, in a file, you can import them whenever the, you need them, okay? And use it wherever you need them in an application. But you don't mix things uh, inside your application. Your application can have many components, many files, and so on, and so you don't risk uh, getting confused, OK? Um, OK, uh, there are also other advantages, but uh, we are not talking about this uh, in the course. I mean, of course, the, having things ordered uh, is better than having a complete mess of things, OK? Um, OK, so in short, we have uh, the React application here in the mid with interacts with the DOM, which you will not see. We will not see it uh, in React. Okay, this is managed by the browser. We will add this API file that contains all the functions that interacts with the server. Uh, that will use fetch. Okay, that is the primitive, the function that is available in the browser environment to uh, send a synchronous request towards. Uh, uh, web servers, and then we will move uh, using the HTTP protocol towards the server where we have the server that we already prepared, okay, the API server. That basically it's a, a, a Node, um, Node.js application, so it's a script executed in the Node environment which loads the Express library to implement a, a simple web server where you implement, uh, you know, get, post, and so on, all the methods that you need and that it also interacts with the database, okay? That's a conceptual architecture. And in practice, uh, we need to manage this uh, state, which will be put into actually a, a state of React, okay, in some components, maybe in app, if you don't know where to put it in, in React, so in the top level component. You can interact with this state uh, uh, via the HTTP APIs that you already designed, okay, on the server side. Uh, and basically, these APIs are a way to interact with the database, okay, which needs to be to stay on the server side. Why on the server side? Because 
other users can interact with this uh, database as well. Okay, that's the concept of having a database. Okay, otherwise we could have a, a local database, but I mean that's not the purpose of a web application. Um, I introduced two terms here: this uh, rehydrating and uh, dehydrating. Okay. Uh, just two technical terms, but in short, it means uh, uh, when I'm rehydrating things, uh, it means that I'm going to the server and asking the server to tell me the information needed to create the application state in my application. So that's what happens when you load the application. First thing that the application does is go to the server, ask uh, for the first set of information that needs to be shown in the beginning when you load the application, okay? Uh, the dehydrating is actually the opposite. So you did some operations on in the data, on the state data that you have in the application, and you would like to save these modifications to the server, okay? It's like, uh, uh, you know, hydrating it's a verb that means uh, you are putting water, right? So in a certain sense, it's like your application is empty, okay? And when you load things, you are putting water, make it bigger so you put the data inside. And then at a certain time, you need to save it. So you suck the water and, and you put it into the, into the, into the server, yeah. Uh, also, rehydrating should also happen when we want to refresh the state, okay? Because React app, but in general, any web application, it's not just React, any web application cannot know whether, whether others changed the information that is provided by the API server. As in the example I told you before, you are booking something. I don't know if somebody else on the other side of the world has booked a, a place, okay, on the plane, on the, on the train, whatever, on the, in the theater where I would like to go, okay? Things happen without my knowledge. And so the only place I can mm, uh, retrieve this information is go to the server and ask uh, for this information, okay? So sometimes we need to refresh the application information, okay? Not just the load at loading time. At loading time, for sure, the application is empty, okay? Has no data. The just the initial value of the presentation data. The form is closed and whatever, okay? But uh, we need to load the data from the server. And then periodically, and then now I, we will discuss how fast, how, how, how often we should do this operation. We should load this information from the server, okay? So let's start from the easiest thing. Uh, rehydrating at mount time. So you have a component, a list of film, as in the labs, a list of answers, as in this example. And we would like to load the information to show from the server, okay? So exactly, it's very, very similar to what we saw before, okay? So we need to have an asynchronous operation happening that is uh, asking the server for information, wait for the answer, okay? And this is a, a side effect because uh, it's not to be run at every render. Okay, it's something that needs to be run, uh, to be run uh, uh, in this case, just once at the beginning, okay? So it's a perfect candidate to be, po uh, to be put into the use effect. So you put the callback and you put your code. For instance, here, let's say the key is a, a way to fetch uh, something, okay? And then you get the result and you store it into a state as we did before, okay? And then we will see the rest. Second thing is, when do we need to call this callback of the use effect? Well, in this case, just at mount time. So, mount time means uh, empty array, okay? If we forget about this, uh, um, this uh, second parameter, this function will be run every time the component renders, okay? Yes, that's a question. We have a, uh, sorry, I have what? A dependent, yeah, yes, 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 I would say so. I mean, uh, it's a side effect in the sense you, uh, 
it's a something that you don't uh, need to run at every render that basically it's every time you need to ask for information from the web server uh, typically uh, uh, the time at which you need to ask for information never is never the same as the render time okay so react rendering is one thing is controlled entirely by react when you want to load information from the server it's a, a, a time that you want to control in your application with your own logic okay sometimes the two things match because at mount time so when the component appears in the virtual DOM typically I need to run the first request but then subsequent requests so sequ uh, request that happens later may happen at different times for instance maybe because I clicked on something, I clicked on a button, or as before, I tapped something in a box, uh, and so on, which has nothing to do with the render, okay? This is just for the uh, mount time, which is actually a, a rendering event, okay? Because after the first mount, the, uh, the React, first thing, it renders the component, okay? So to make it appear in the virtual DOM. Okay. Uh, but it's true, I mean, as a general rule, as you said, every time uh, uh, we have a, 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 let's say a, a dependency, as you said, <laughs> with the server, either it goes into the use effect, typically, for instance, at mount time, or it might go into an event handler, okay? That's the other option, okay? Uh, we. I'm not sure I there are examples on the slide, but for sure we will have examples uh, in the code, okay? Uh, where we run something uh, because something has changed in, 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 um, because an event, in a synchronous event happened in the user interface. A click, for instance, okay? On a button. Um, okay, so here we load uh, uh, the information and we load it only at mount time because you have the empty array, okay? That's the most common usage of the use effect. Also for the exam, I mean, for the exam, you will have this at least once because you have a database, you have an application, at a certain point, you need to load something, okay? So this is guaranteed to be present in the exam, okay? The use effect with the empty array, okay? Because you need to start at a certain point, okay? Well, or, or, yeah, yeah. Unless you show an empty page and the button, okay, <laughs> and go ahead and proceed, okay. But I mean, typically we have a, 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 a landing page where you should already do something, okay, or you should uh, already have uh, some information present and so on, okay. Um, okay. Uh, we talked before what to do in case uh, there's a slow rendering. So, no slow, so slow loading, okay? So you ask for information about, uh, from the server and the server takes some time to uh, give you an answer, okay? Uh, this is a possibility to have uh, a state and to set this state and reset the state uh, when you get the information uh, and in the meanwhile show something that uh, is uh, meaningful to the user, okay? But we already discussed this. Um, okay, uh, before going on, I would like to point out this problem. Okay. Uh, <coughs> of course, once you know, so you know that something has been changed in the API server, you can use the use effect and run the side effect. So send the request to the server and get the answer, put it into a state, and have the application re-render and show you the information, okay? The point is that uh, unless it's the user that did the modification to the data, so your user that, that is using your application, you don't know if somebody else has done these uh, modifications, okay? Because it's a multi, uh, client application. I mean, there are different, I don't want to say users, which is a more peculiar concept, but uh, uh, 
many clients that can interact with the same server, okay, same database, same server. And so uh, this problem has to be addressed in some way, okay? Uh, here the slides call it uh, N clients problem. So N application, a web application, is by definition a multi client application because anybody who connects to the server gets a copy of the client application. That's the first thing that uh, React Development Server does. It, give, it serves you the HTML and the JavaScript of the application. And then in JavaScript you load the information and do whatever you want. Okay? So, <coughs> there's a unique server, just one server and many clients. Let's say many browsers for simplicity. Okay? How can we know that somebody else has changed something in the server? Well, actually, we have no answer in this course. We only have this uh, left uh, solution, <laughs> okay? The solution is so-called better than nothing. That means that, uh, as I said before, sometimes we refresh the state of the application. It means we go to the server and we ask for the information just to check if something has changed. Okay, so we refresh the information. Let's say you are booking something and every once in a while you go to the server and you ask for a, an updated version of the uh, booking map, okay? Or the seats booked and so on, okay? That's a possibility. Another possibility that is very frequent, okay, is uh, uh, every time you do an operation okay, that, need, that involves uh, the server, so not just uh, get the information, but you know, we would like to update an information, uh, delete, uh, add, and so on, you reload the whole set of information from the server because you have to interact with the server anyway. So at that time, it's very convenient to interact with the server because you have to interact with the server in any case, okay? It's not really a solution in the sense that, uh, I mean, we are not notified of the fact that somebody has changed something on the server, right? That would be the best option, the real solution. The server communicates changes as soon as they, uh, they appear. But unfortunately, it's out of scope of this course, okay? Because it's more complex. You, always, you need to always have a, an open channel with the server and a two-way protocol and so on. And the, the HTTP protocol it, it, it has been designed to be client-server protocol. So the client has to initiate uh, the request. Okay? It's not that the server can send you stuff. Okay? So there are a lot of tricks and techniques that can be used to, you know, address this problem in a better way than what we are going to do in this course. But unfortunately, it makes the discussion much more complex. Okay? But they are possible. You're using it every day, probably. Like uh, um, you are writing in a Google Doc. I, I, I hope most of you have used Google Doc or similar things uh, where you type and uh, uh, some colleagues and uh, somebody else can type and while the other types things appear immediately right that's a single page application but it also has this functionality where the server sends the information to the client without the client asking you know every second for new information okay but this kind of functionality is much more difficult to implement it requires additional functionality in the browsers and so on and it's a bit out of scope uh, I mean it's out to score for our course, okay? If we had uh, more credits, we could do more, of course. Um, so typically web sockets are the way in which this stuff is handled, okay? But this is, you know, it's not, of course it's not required for the exam, for sure, because we are not discussing it. And we will uh, know that, uh, I mean, we will uh, have limitations and we will try to live with these limitations and try to, you s let's say address them as, as uh, in the best possible way, uh, knowing that uh, uh, sometimes uh, things uh, might not be might not match, you know, with the state of the server. So we need to be to handle this situation. Okay, like I book a seat, and this this seat has already been booked. I I was uh, seeing this uh, seat as as free. I go to the server, I ask for, for the seat that, uh, that is now already booked, I didn't know, 
and the server replies that it's already booked. We just need to handle this kind of situations, okay? So, uh, of course, it would be better, you know, to, to be notified of what's happening on the server, but it's not always, uh, I mean, it's difficult to implement in practice, and by the way, it's not always uh, uh, required by the application, okay? Like when you are booking a, a seat on an airplane or a train or whatever, typically, the train uh, company or the uh, airline company doesn't notify you of the fact that seats uh, get booked. You discover it when you book, uh, I mean, when you send a request and you actually pay or whatever, okay? So, so that is not even required. It's just that the fact that you need to be, you need to handle the fact that with your application, some requests may fail. Fail for application reasons, I mean, things are already booked. It's normal, it might happen, okay? Yeah, that's the question. Yes. That's why in a site where you have to book something, they give you a timer? Yeah, yeah, more or less, yes. I mean, you say the, uh, for the recording. Uh, is, it, is it why, uh, this is the reason why um, in a site where uh, you book uh, things uh, or you buy things, uh, they give you a time, yeah. It depends on, on the server implementation. It depends when they want to reserve your, uh, the resources. Typically, they give you a timer because they, let's say, pre-book what you said you would like to book, and they give you a certain time to finalize, finalize the operation, which typically involves paying, okay? Which is not immediate in general, okay? At least it takes uh, a few seconds. But once they took uh, the payment, they cannot just say, I'm sorry, it disappeared in the meanwhile, right? <laughs> so it's sort of they pre-booked stuff, but they cannot uh, pre-book things and keep them pre-booked uh, for uh, a long period of time because otherwise people start booking things uh, and they never get, they, they, they are never freed, okay? So they, they never become free again, okay? So you end up with uh, uh, pre-booked things which are never uh, uh, bought never purchased, okay? Yeah, so that's, that's a good uh, uh, remark, okay? Um, yeah, uh, in case we would like to have a, a behavior like this in the application, for instance, for the exam, we will always uh, exp make it this explicit. Otherwise, it's enough to end the fact that, you know, request towards the server might uh, fail, okay? because in some cases uh, they might fail, like uh, there are shared resources that can be taken by others, of course. Uh, uh, the, uh, so somebody else can, can, uh, might have taken them um, uh, before you, okay? Okay, uh, beware of the infinite loops uh, with use effects. Um, yeah, and then we will code a little a little bit uh, after a few slides, okay? So, uh, infinite loops, uh, you need to be careful, but I mean, during development, you will uh, notice this, okay? Uh, well, the dependency array is missing, but that's the easiest one. I mean, you open, uh, you open the network tab and you will see that it doesn't stop, okay? So typically in the use effect, you have uh, request towards the server, we forgot the uh, empty array, and you know, this, uh, um, <coughs> this uh, request will be done uh, uh, every render because in the callback you typically do set of the state, okay? And if the state is new, and remember with an array or with an object it is always new, because it's a new reference, even if the data is the same. If the state is new, it will render the component, and the use effect will be run again, because you forgot the array, empty array, okay? And forgetting the empty array means run every time the component is rendered, okay? This does not appear as a bug in your application, so be careful, you know, check the network tab. This is a problem at the exam, okay? I don't want to see these things, okay? I'm not saying I'm, I'm saying it's failed exam, okay? But for sure it cost you marks, okay? Because, I mean, you didn't even check what your application is doing with the server, okay? You are overloading the server 
with requests which are actually the exact same request, okay, at the maximum speed that's possible, <laughs> okay, so not that good, okay. Uh, but I mean, it, it's easy to catch. You debug a little bit with this uh, console and network tab open, just check that nothing wrong is happening while using your application and you're fine, okay. Um, and one of the items in the dependency array is a JavaScript object or array, okay? That is not a, a guaranteed problem, but it's typically a problem. So let's try to avoid this problem. Why? Because objects and arrays for JavaScript are references, okay? So they're actual values, but the values that you don't control because they are reference, like pointers in other languages, in C language and so on, okay? So, you know that uh, sometimes you need to create a new point because you create a new array, you create a new object and so on, but sometimes the creation of new object or new array is not under your control, okay? So you end up having something that has changed but whose content is the same, okay? And, uh, but this, anyway, triggers the execution of the use effect callback because the use effect callback see, uh, can see only a set of values and it compares actual values, so numbers, strings, booleans, but also references to objects and arrays. If the references are the same, it says, well, it's the same, okay? And it doesn't go inside the object and inside the array. That's another problem also. Uh, and, uh, uh, if the reference is different, it thinks something has changed, so it triggers the execution of the callback, okay? So, in short, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, where is written? Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, it's written somewhere in the slide. In short, don't use arrays or objects, okay? Because they only make things complicated, difficult to read, difficult to understand, because you need to think and make sure that new object, new array has not been created if not necessary. And so it's much more difficult to, uh, to create, uh, debug, and maintain this kind of code. Okay? So just uh, a couple of uh, quits. Okay? And then we will break for the, um, you know, uh, we will break for 10 minutes, okay, as usual. So, this is a, some code that use uh, the use effect, okay? Use effect, uh, it's a, a component, count input changes because it returns JSX, okay? It doesn't interact with the server, so nothing to do with the server at the moment here in, in, in the component, okay? So, there's a value and there's a counter, okay? The input text, uh, on change, handle change, number of changes. So there's a input type text, so there's a box. Okay, I don't have the code for this. This is just a box. Handle change, on on change, set value, event target value. So this is a controlled form. Nothing new here. So indeed there's a state value, which is used as the value of the, of the form. But there is also a counter. That is another state starting at minus one, well, okay, don't care too much. And there's a use effect that says that uh, uh, there's a callback and uh, uh, it should execute set count, take the old value of count, see? Okay, see, that's the old value of the state, remember. So if I call it on set count, it will be count, and it returns count plus one, okay? So what's wrong here? This should be easy to catch, hope. So what happens? What happens with this use effect? Can anybody see the bug? I mean, it's a use effect, so there's a callback. First, the first, uh, the first it's a callback, no problem, okay? And the second, and the second parameter, Actually, it's missing, right? So, actually, it's missing. So, every time the component renders, it will increase the count of a value of one, okay? So, that's plus one, right? So, the first time the component uh, is rendered, 
the callback is executed. In any case, regardless of what you put in second parameter, here it's missing, but in any case, it's executed. So it will set count to minus one plus one, zero. Okay? So it changes the state. And then it has changed the state, right? So a new render happens because React knows that a part of the state, so one state of the component has changed. So it will re-render. And now, wait, it will re-render, so there will be a value here, okay? And then, and then it is cute to use effect again because you're missing the second parameter. So every time a component renders, this callback is executed. But unfortunately, every time the, this callback is executed, it changes the state of the same component. So you change the state, the render happens again, and again, and again, and again, because every time the component renders, the use effect calls the callback, okay? So it executes the callback, and the callback changes the state, okay? So if you have no way of saying either to the use effect, just execute it once, or when something changes, which is not actually what you are setting, okay? Like the value, for instance. Uh, you will uh, end with an infinite loop, okay? Because you are triggering something after the render that makes the component render again, okay? That's the risk of using the use effect uh, with, uh, I mean, without thinking too much, okay? Here, the, the thing is very simple. Probably uh, you, you wanted to add a dependency, right? Okay, otherwise here, that's an infinite loop. Uh, so, that's the way in which we could fix uh, what we wrote before. If you add a dependency, okay, the callback will be used, will be called only when the list of the values uh, uh, given as a second parameter changes, change. So, so if value changes, the use effect will be called, okay? So, now the code works, right? So, the count will change only when the value will change, okay? Because it will run at the beginning, and that's why we put uh, minus one. Because at the beginning we have this uh, first uh, time at which, you know, the set uh, count will be called in any case because the use effect will call it in any case. So from minus one, we go to zero. That is the actual starting value we would like to have in the component, right? And then, and then every time the value changes, and the value changes because the user is typing into the, uh, the input text. We also change the value, of course, that's the principle of the controlled component. But also the count is increased by one, okay? And so, uh, and then second time, the use effect will not be, will not run the, the um, callback because the value didn't change, okay? The second time the React tries to render the component, it will see that value didn't change because it's exactly the same as before. Count has changed, fine. Count is not in the list of dependencies. So the count here that is shown in the interface will be updated, but that's all. No new render will happen, okay? Because we didn't call set count again, luckily, I would say, okay? So just be careful of these things, okay? That was uh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, I forgot something. Okay, and that's the occasion in which React will say something into the console. It will say, there's probably an infinite loop. I'm being re-rendering the component like 30 times. There's something that doesn't work, okay? I mean, uh, re-rendering uh, re the same component, okay? That's, that's the problem. Second example, count secrets. So I have... Uh, a state secret, which is actually an object with a value and with a counter. So, similar to the previous one, okay? 
So there's a, te there's a text box, the on change, and the on change goes, takes the event value, even target value, and creates a new object with the old value. Okay? Spread S means to copy the old object. So it will copy count secrets and the old value, and then it will override the value with the new one. Okay? And so you, you might think, well, this should work, right? So, uh, uh, use effect only calls the callback when the secret changes, okay? And the secret uh, changes, uh, what, what does it do? If secret value equal to secret, set secret, uh, uh, count secrets uh, plus one, okay? So, the idea here was every time you type secret, okay, so in the form there's a the secret word, string, uh, you increase the counter by one, okay? So, why is this uh, not working, okay? So, this is not working. I mean, yeah, it's more or less working, but uh, again, it has a problem, okay? The problem is that uh, every time after you type secret, okay, you create a new object, okay? And new object, and the object is the dependency, in the list of dependency of the use effect. So when you create a new object, React thinks something has changed, okay? So it calls your callback, but what does your callback do? Actually, it creates again a new object. Actually, the value is the same because, uh, uh, well, no, it's plus one, okay, it doesn't matter. But the fact is that you create a new object, okay? Even if you have a way to, you know, to, to say it's the same object, uh, it's the same content, it doesn't matter. React only checks, uh, as it does for the state, that, uh, actually, it's the state, that uh, the value, so the reference in this case, changed, okay? So, it, it runs the callback, and if in the callback you do something that makes the callback run again, okay, because you trigger a re-render by changing the state and so on, that's a problem, that's an infinite loop again, okay? So this is more difficult to solve, okay? Because if you actually would like to use an object as a state or an array as a state, like if, when we have the list of things, the list of answers and so on, what can we do? Well, actually, uh, I mean, we should find a way not to use uh, as a dependency an array or an object, okay? In this case, uh, it's easy to fix because it's like, uh, it's the same example as before. It's not forbidden to use an object, a, a, a field of an object. You, you can use a property or a field of an object, okay? So you can write as a dependency secret.value or secret.count secrets and or whatever you would like to have. But it should be a primitive value, number, a string, or a boolean, okay? If it's an array or object, you risk having problems because every time you create a new object, a new array, it will be seen as something different from React, okay? So how to solve? Simply avoid the situation. Do not use object as dependencies. I can tell you a, a little trick. Sometimes it's useful, but you need to be careful as well. If it's an array, you might insert array.length as a dependency, but it only works if the array length changes. Okay, so it's just a trick. Uh, it's sort of working, for instance, in case you have an empty array and then you have something in the array. Okay, or you know that you deleted or added something, but if you changed something, this doesn't work anymore, okay? So, useful to keep in mind, but uh, not really fundamental. Uh, we should uh, maybe find a different way of handling the things, okay? Maybe using an additional state could be an option, okay? Uh, we need to think, uh, 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 inside the application if it, this makes sense or not, okay? But try to avoid as much as possible using a, an array or an object as a dependency, okay? If I see something like this and ex at the exam, again, 
I'm not saying it's wrong, maybe it's working because you, you were careful and so on, okay? But for sure I will, I will ask you to explain why it works, okay? And if you, could, if you give a good explanation, if you know perfectly how the use effect works uh, and why you could have created an object or an array and you didn't create it and because uh, otherwise it this and this happens, that's more or less fine, okay? But of course you run into more <laughs> problems than, you know, not you simply not using it and maybe adding a state, okay? It's not, it's not a problem to add a state, okay? Most of uh, the application that I see at the exam can have like 10 states or stuff like that. I mean, it's fine, okay? As long as each state has a purpose and more or less it's useful, okay? It's not just full of states because I didn't really know where to put things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's reasonable, okay? Application state can be complex, especially if the application is not trivial like these ones. Okay. Uh, um, okay, and the same happens in case you have lists, okay? So, uh, list means arrays, okay? So avoid using the reference to the array as a dependency as well, okay? Uh, ah, okay, as I was saying, uh, you can use length but remember, only if it's appropriate. So only if the actual length of the array changes, otherwise you should have some other ways of indicating that you need to call the callback. And if you are really in trouble, you use an additional state that you set, like a Boolean state that you set to say, I would like to call the callback. And you put it into the dependency list, okay? So an immediate val a primitive value like a number, Boolean or string is fine. Okay, Okay. Uh, this is more complex, uh, but before going into these details, uh, uh, we will break for 10 minutes, and then I prepare the example, and we'll try to write, to write some code, uh, at least loading something from the server, okay? That's the minimum that uh, you will have to do next time in the lab, okay? So let's break 10 minutes. Uh, okay.